have breaking news out of Austin, Texas. 21-year-old Julie Ann Gonzalez, a mother of a two-year-old daughter with an estranged husband, disappeared into thin air almost exactly a month ago. Her family desperately searching for her. And what's evolved here on this show tonight is that the aunt was saying that she had questions about the estranged husband's story, and the estranged husband called us up and has been talking to us at length, saying, you know, he is not responsible. He'd be happy to take a polygraph. Uh, they can come in and search his home. And uh, I'm no detective, but he sounds believable to me, so we're wondering who else could be involved because the aunt has said, and I think it makes perfect sense, she just bought a new car. She left the new car. Who would leave a spanking new car and vanish and leave a two-year-old child? behind and certainly not in that order and um, is there somebody else a third party a mystery party uh, that we don't know about now here's what's so fascinating it's Dora you're saying to me that somebody is sending texts from her cell phone and you don't know who it is but they're trying to pretend like they're her what are Correct. those text messages from her cell phone saying? And they're coming to your cell phone? No, they're being posted via Facebook and MySpace. All right, listen, we have the missing woman's mother has also called in right now. And we would like to hear from you, ma'am. Uh, my apologies, my notes are scattered here. Can you give us your name, ma'am, and, and tell us why you're calling in? My name is Sandra Soto, and I'm Julianne Gonzalez's mother. Well, first of all, my, my heart goes out to you. We want to be part of the solution here on issues and help find your beautiful missing daughter so that your granddaughter has a mom. And uh, we're looking at the search right now. You've been watching our show, Issues. What do you make of what you've heard so far from George de la Cruz, uh, your daughter's estranged husband? I think um, that somebody knows something. I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody, but I know somebody knows something. I'm very concerned about Julie, but also concerned about my granddaughter because George does have a attempted suicide on his record. A in what? January, an attempted suicide on his record. In January, when he separated, when Julie left him, he attempted to commit suicide while he was taking care of Layla. Is this true, George? No, I wasn't taking care of her. That time I didn't have her. She, Julie came to pick her up, and she was already on Julie's hands. And like I said, at that time, yes, I, I was, like I said, I was, I did have problems. Like I said, everything was going down, and I went into a, a great depression, right, and depressed. So like I said, I, I did want to take my uh, my life out. But like I said, it didn't happen. Uh, I went to the hospital before anything ha worse happened. And I recovered what did, from what that. Ha what did you do? Did you... No, what? I just took a lot of over-the-counter pills. Uh, overdose. All right. Uh, let's take a look at... We're hearing from George. Let's take a look at George vis-a-vis okay. -vis his MySpace page. And uh, his face is going to pop up in the course of looking at that MySpace page, which we're going to show you in a second. Um, we lost George de la Cruz, but... I got to tell you one last question to the mother. Um, did your daughter meet anybody else? Because my gut tells me, and I don't know, I'm not a detective, that she may have met somebody else and that person may be the person responsible. Well, you know what? Um, everybody can say that. Anybody that doesn't know Julie can say that. But our family is so tight that there is never lack of communication. Our family is always talking to each other, texting each other, you know, uh, cousins, nephews, nieces, aunts, uncles, grandparents, we are tight. By the way, there's George right there. You're taking a look at the gentleman we've been listening to on the phone. That's him. And we just learned that he was so distraught over his wife leaving him that he attempted to take his own life with pills. He survived. Uh, he says he's not responsible for uh, his estranged wife's disappearance. And uh, the family says, well, she would never disappear on her own. I have a question for the mother. Do you think police are doing everything they can? No. Why not? No, because they haven't been able to locate her phone. They never fingerprinted the car that sat in, in the parking lot of that uh, pharmacy for, you know, up to almost eight days. And the they didn't find the vehicle. I found the vehicle. 
Yeah. Uh, Dora, you were going to say something? Austin Police Department did not find the vehicle. I found the vehicle. And you're, and you're saying they never fingerprinted the vehicle? No. Never. Never. And, wow. and now the, the vehicle has been repossessed by the car lot where Julie purchased the vehicle three weeks prior to her disappearance. And they are still holding on to that vehicle, but they are ready to put it back into their inventory. They are working with me as far as not putting it back into the inventory until APD uh, does something. Even the owners of the car lot know that APD should be looking into that vehicle before they put it back into the inventory. And when you say APD, you're talking about Austin Police Department. So they didn't. Mike Brooks, what do you make of that? That sounds pretty, that sounds pretty sloppy. They didn't do fingerprints or test DNA on that vehicle because, well, go ahead. No, no. Well, most departments, when someone is reported missing, what they do, they, they decide, okay, is this person a critical or non-critical missing person? And this is done by what they are presented with. Uh, you know, is there any sign of foul play? Was there any sign of a struggle in the car? Um, what else have they found? Did this woman just go missing? And it, it could be that they let, did not determine this to be a critical missing yeah, person. Let me tell you another possibility, Dora. Okay. Your daughter isn't famous, and she isn't rich. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. All right, exactly. so I, I do feel that if this was some big movie star or some uh, highfalutin heiress, they would have done the fingerprints on that car. That's right. Dora, Cooper, tell me what your thoughts are. I have to disagree with you on that one, Jane. Okay, well, you can disagree. I want to hear Dora, and then I'll hear you. Well, Jane, another funny thing is after we had reported her missing, that we were informed by the police officers that came out that George had already filed a complaint against Julie claiming she abandoned her child with him. No, that's a lie. Right there, that's a lie. Well, tell us where your side is, George. Well, like I said, Saturday we figured out that Julie hasn't been talking to no one, so we acted up, right? So my mom called the police to just make a report saying, because like I said, I had a lot of problems with Julie saying that she wanted to put me in the police supervision because of Layla because there's times that I come late to give her to her because there's certain times that I gotta give it to her and there's times that I'm gonna be there and Julie will be mad so like I said I wanted to be okay with the police saying you know what Julie took uh, left me here to the weekend and she said it was okay and I don't want no problems with the police I don't want like I said to take away my daughter and like I said we never told her that she like I said I was just trying to cover my end to be okay with the police Mike, Mike Brooks, give me this. Yeah, sure. Given that text messages have come in from this cell phone, don't you think cops should have already figured out where that cell phone was and e either be able to say, yes, this cell phone is in the hands of Julianne Gonzalez and she's just split, or right. this cell phone is in the hands of the suspect? They could. I mean, what, if I was an investigator, one of the things I'd probably do would be to try to give that call phone a call. See who answers it. Like, you know, is it. Is it somebody, you know, is it somebody, uh, you know, is it her or someone else? You know, we've already done that. We've already, we call it every day. Oh, you call it every day? What we call happens? it every day. No one answers. It goes straight to its little message that this person's voicemail box has not been set up yet. That phone is still on. It's just yep. turned off. But the following the pings, that's what they're supposed to do. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mom. This is Sandra. Um... What, what angers me so much about Austin APD is that the very first time that we were interviewed on um, the Fox Network network here in Austin, you know, they came to us and, you know, they asked us what we thought. And, we, you know, my sister went on there, they interviewed her, then they went to George's house and they interviewed him, and then they went to Sergeant Greg Moss at Austin Police Department. She made a very strong statement that... She is not considered, um, this is not considered a foul play uh, disappearance. Tell me, how can you make that strong of an assumption without strong evidence to, to you know, support it? Well, I got to tell you one thing. 
Uh, and if the Austin Police Department is watching, you are invited on this show to explain your position. We're not letting this go, Austin PD. We're going to stay on top of it. We're going to have this family back. Will you come back, Dora? Yes, ma'am, I will. Will you come back, George? Yes, I will. And will you come back? Uh, we're talking to the mom on the phone of this missing woman. Most definitely. Sandra.